Welcome back everyone, Techno20 here, and today we're going to be making a Raspberry Pi IP camera. So let's get started. So to do this project, you're going to need a few basic parts. Um, so starting off, the most important is a Raspberry Pi. So in my case, I am using the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. Um, it's a great one, it's twice the power of the normal one, the first Raspberry Pi. You're going to need a power cable to power this. You're going to need a display to hook it up to. I'm just going to be using an old, old, old flat screen that's half broken. You're going to need some sort of a network connection. So in my case, I am using this little wireless antenna, um, 802.11.bgn, 2.4 GHz. It's good enough, communicates with our router. Or you can also use an Ethernet connection. You will also, of course, need a keyboard and a webcam because, hey, it's, it's basically a camera we're going to be hooking up. So to get started, obviously, the first thing you're going to have to do is power up your Raspberry Pi, which will take a few moments. And then, first of all, we have to connect it to our wireless router, so I'll show you guys that. Then our next step is going to be installing the wired USB webcam library from the Raspberry Pi site to confirm that our webcam is in fact working with the Raspberry Pi. Then we are going to set up motion library to be able to view it wirelessly. So first of all go ahead and log into your Raspberry Pi if this is your first time. The default username will be Pi and the password will be Raspberry. So there are many ways to connect to your Wi-Fi network. Um, if you guys really have to, um, you guys can just go to Start X, which is the user interface. You will need a mouse to do this part. If you're using Ethernet, you don't have to worry about this. And of course, you can do this from terminal, but you can just go over here to Preferences, Wi-Fi configuration. Make sure your Wi-Fi antenna is plugged in and your Wi-Fi network is showing. So then you can connect to it it's gonna ask you for a password and stuff and you will get your IP address now note the IP address here given so in our case that is 192.168.10.110 um, that will be important when we end when we go to configure the camera so you go, now you can just log off because press it down and log off of the user interface um, if you also have to view your IP address, you can just go to enter the command ifconfig and that will show you all you need to know about your internet connection. So we can, so we can see right here that, that this is the ethernet, this and then our wireless antenna. So for our wireless antenna, we can see that our internet address is 192.168.10.110. So we know we are connected. So we want to get started by making, by downloading the LS webcam, no, the FS webcam respiratory slash library from the Raspberry Pi site. And this will enable the Raspberry Pi to communicate with USB webcams, which is what we're using and which is what we need. It's also going to, because the motion library is going to be building on top of this. So to download that, the FS webcam package, all you have to go to is sudo, which is to get the administrator which is to enter an administrator command, apt-get, which is how you install or uninstall um, packages. So we want to install, you can also, like if you're removing, you would say remove, if you're updating, you would say get update, and then we're just going to enter the name of the package, in this case it's FS Webcam. So just hit enter, it's going to say building dependencies, reading state information, and then you're going to get this notification additional drive space will be it's going to ask you for yes or no in that in that case you're going to press yes to allow it to install then just wait a few moments and it has installed so now you want to go to do another apt get command sudo apt dash get and this time you want to just run an update to make sure everything is running 
the latest versions and so the Raspberry Pi will start recognizing the FS webcam package. This may take a little while. So it has completed. So what we can do now to test to make sure it has detected our webcam and that it is working is we can take get it to take a picture. So to do that all you have to do is just press FS webcam. Then you just type name group, which in this case we're just going to take it as say test.jpg point our webcam towards us so that way we'll be taking like a picture of my horrible setup there we go there's our webcam say cheese the and then it says trying source module and then if Eventually, we'll say adjusting resolution, capturing frame, and it has captured the frame. If we want to take another one, say this time we are going to save it as image.jpg. Just give it a name. Boom! It has taken the second picture. So, now we can of course go back to the user interface. You can do this from commands, too, by using like image v the image viewing. Um, this just makes it a bit easier when you're browsing files. Of course, you could use CD and then you don't even have to because this is already in the test one, but here we go. Here's our test.jpg. Just opening up and here it is. So we it's of course not the best resolution, also because I'm using like a five dollar webcam. But here we go. So we can see the camera, we can see my other chair, and we can see my couch, which I also use as another set one occasionally. Um, so we can also go through the second image we also took. So let's load that one, and that one also looks pretty similar. Because we, it does leave a timestamp. If you don't want it to have a timestamp, of course you can configure that by using by also by using command dash double dash no dash banner. You can also force a resolution, so by default it's going to take it at 320 by 240. You can force a resolution by pressing dash R and then see if you want to take it 720p, 1280 by 720. So let's go back to the command line because everything else is easier to do that way. So we are back at our command line. And now we know that our webcam works and our Raspberry Pi is communicating with it and that we can take a picture. Now we just have to get it to stream over the internet. Now, to do that, I'm going to be using a package called the Motion um, Library. It's, also, it's technically used for motion detection of cameras to record, but also does web streaming, and it's pretty simple to use. So now we just have to do the same thing we did for the FS webcam package. We're going to go sudo apt-get, and we're going to enter motion install and motion, which is the name of the library. So install that. We're gonna get another message saying if we want to install it, we press yes. And it is installing. It will download then install so it may take 30 seconds or so and it is done so now we have to go and actually configure motion and start the service so it installs as a daemon which means you can get it to start automatically when the raspberry pi starts say you, if you were going to use it as an ip camera um, that's not an actual use for it, but but we can change the configuration file so that we can enable 
web access so we can connect to it from a computer or a phone and so we can have it get it to auto start so the default location is we can go to sudo nano nano is the command line text editor in case you guys don't know I can link an article about that um, you can do basic text editing just like notepad except it's not as feature rich as notepad um, it just displays text and you edit and then the location of the file which is slash etc which is where your programs install slash motion slash motion dot cnf and we get into the configuration panel now it is a pretty large configuration file um, so you may want to get familiar with it first so the first thing we want to change up here is where it says I'm um, the daemon um, it says the fault is off we want to change that to on so that it can always run in the background then we can scroll down input 8 is default for webcams um, if you would like to change the resolution of your webcam I'm gonna leave it at 320 by 240 because it's going to be actually streaming JPEG files, not as a continuous video stream. And if you increase the resolution, you might need a pretty fast router to keep up. So you can say the num maximum number of frames to be captured by second. I say you should set that to something of around uh, 16. In the free time, you don't have to touch any of this. If you want auto brightness, you can set that to on if your camera has crap brightness like this one. I'm going to leave it off because it does increase processing time and it will lag um, your video stream so then we can keep going down all the way down to where it says network it may take you a while so here we go live webcam server um, you can set up your port by default it's running on port 8081 as you guys can see you can make that any other port for whatever reason if you already have something on 8081 if you're on 8082 if you're, on, if you're going to be running multiple of these then you have your webcam quality, the default is 50, I'm going to just make something like 40 because 50 does actually um, even lag. So then we have our webcam motion, this is if you want it to output frames at 1 FPS and when it detects motion ramp up to like 16 or 20. I'm going to leave it off just because I don't I don't want to have to get it. That. And for the webcam maximum frame, I'm just going to set it to 6 because you don't want to be forcing this because it's not going to be fast enough to push that over the router anyways next thing we're going to do is we're going to change webcam localhost to off so we can connect to it from a computer or remotely and that is it so to exit nano you just press ctrl x it's going to ask you do you want to save changes and you want to press yes and enter and we have we are done now if it says you do not have privileges or cannot write that means you didn't enter sudo nano you have to go back and use the open nano text editor as an administrator. So the next step that we have to do, now that this is working, is we want to actually have want to have it like turn on. So to start the service, we're just going to go to start. So we have to go to another configuration file, so sudo nano, and this time it's at slash etc again, slash default which is well well the thing system keeps its defaults slash motion so here we have to set start motion daemon to yes control x save your changes yep now we can go to sudo service motion start and set starting motion detection daemon motion and it has started so we are basically almost done so we can now go, now that we, you know, we know our IP address, you just have to open up and any browser tab from any computer device. You can even do it from the Raspberry Pi itself. So to view our camera, we just have to go on any device that has, well, any web driver, any web browser. So we can just even use the Raspberry Pi itself. So we can just go to Start X, open the visual interface, Open our web browser. Just enter the URL, which is 192.168.10. Hey, and what's this? Um, 
Hello. So you guys can see me adjusting the camera soon. So you guys can now wave your hand in front of, of your webcam. There is a few seconds, or half a second delay. So you guys can see me now. Hello. Now if you use an actual properly good webcam, you won't have these color issues. Oh, it will do this once in a couple of frames. Able to reach open VGA device. Um, this is just because of the Raspberry Pi. It should come back, see it kind of automatically. Um, when I say this camera has brightness issues, you guys can look over at the window. It's like glaring bright, even though it's not that bright outside. But um, that and you guys can see that like this part of the screen looks reddish. The bottom part up here looks like blue. If you guys use an actual webcam that you didn't get from a random like your junk drawer, then it will probably work much better. We can see that it, we can we are actually streaming at a couple of frames a second. We can also go over on another computer. So let's go on say my main laptop. Point the camera here. And we can go still go on the same URL. So the IP address, which is one I think. And we can zoom in a little because it is still we can see that it still works. If I wave my hand over by our Raspberry Pi to up oh well. It's gonna do this quite a bit. Um maybe it's due to the webcam, I'm not really sure why it does this. But we're back, see so can I can hand wave my hand towards our Raspberry Pi. And or the monitor for it. Oh, I think this is also because of network communication because the Wi-Fi only picks up like one bar here. I think that also has an influence. So, there you go. That is your Raspberry Pi IP camera. Now some cool funky uses that I thought of. Another thing you could do is you could put this somewhere like beside your door. And then also set up a Raspberry Pi intercom system to see who's at your door. And to also be able to talk to them, you're just going to need a speaker and a microphone. Um, I might do that in a future video. Guys, be sure to leave me a like. Also, maybe send me an email, which will be in the description or on the About My Channel part. Um, send me an email if you guys want to see that one. Be sure to also subscribe so you guys don't miss it when I actually bring it. Um, so, this has been my Raspberry Pi IP camera. See, it's not crashing now. I'm going to be drinking. Oh hey look I'm ghosting! Hey hey we have we have like my other image like here. And then we have me here. Crap you webcam. Um so this would be my Raspberry Pi IP camera tutorial. I will also try to make one that doesn't constantly use JPEG and it's just a video stream. Um you can also watch this through VLC players like any stream. So thank you guys all for watching my Raspberry Pi IP camera. Um if you guys have any questions about this be sure to leave me a comment down below and I will also leave, be sure to leave you guys the main instructor where I got the idea for this from. You guys can be sure to check it that out if you guys would like a written version. It's not by me, but it's done pretty good and it tells you all about how to do this. There's one other Raspberry Pi, just like I'm working on the voice recognition and control software. It's only like two quarter, one quarter, quarter of the way working. Um, if you guys want to see a video about that, be sure to leave me a like and another comment. Um, also, leave it down below. Do you guys like this Raspberry Pi video stuff? Do you guys want more Arduino? Do you guys want more tech, like computer stuff? Software? I don't know. Karate? I don't know. So be sure to leave your comments about that too. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you like this. Subscribe if you guys don't want to miss any of my future videos. And I shall thank you for watching.